Hey Jake with BNH, I'm here with Ryan from Rode, and we have an impressive uh, new product here from Rode. This is the Rodecaster Pro 2. This is what we call an all-in-one audio solution. Uh, mm -hmm. Ryan, what, what was the motivation behind this here? So um, a lot of people will be familiar with the original Rodecaster Pro, yes. which was the world's first fully integrated podcast production console. It brought you know Bluetooth connectivity, microphones, you know audio interfaces, yeah. everything into one. Mm -hmm. And the Rodecaster Pro original found a home in so many different kinds of productions far beyond podcasting. So mm -hmm. the Rodecaster Pro 2, we rethought the entire concept from the ground up and created what we know is the greatest product for all forms of content creators uh, that you've ever seen. And I'm gonna take you through everything that it can do. Completely customizable and perfect for everyone from musicians to streamers to gamers to people um, you know, setting up business comms to live events. And of course, it's the best podcasting product as well. Let's get into it. It's got some amazing digital features, but starting just with the preamps, we went to combo jack inputs so they can accept mic, blind, or instrument, mm. um, so that you can use it for all sorts of different applications, from you know podcasting like this to recording music to doing anything you like. Um, one of the amazing things with the Rodecaster Pro 2 is that we completely redesigned the preamp from the ground up. This is the Rode Revolution preamp, which is incredibly quiet, yet also has amazing uh, high levels of gain. Mm. So it approaches um, the, the measurement limit for how quiet you can make a preamp. It's negative 131.5 dBV. Wow. Um, about a dB and a half quieter than that is the, is the theoretical limit to how quiet you can make a preamp. Um, so when you're plugging in a low sensitivity dynamic microphone, for mm -hmm. instance, um, you don't have a whole bunch of hiss in your signal that you often get with a lot of preamps. Okay. Um, you also have 76 decibels worth of gain available um, that you can turn all the way up. So even the lowest sensitivity sources, you can get plenty of gain out of and it'll be super clean. And so there's really no need for what you call a cloud lifter. Sure, sense, yeah. Right? There's like a, a bunch of different versions, the fed head, the cloud lifter, a lot of different line boosters out there that people will use with low sensitivity dynamic mics to try to boost their signal. Mm. And something we wanted with the Rodecaster Pro 2 was to have uh, a preamp that was so good that not only do you not need a line booster, you will actively degrade the signal by plugging one in. It's cleaner than the best line boosters out there. Wow, so. oh, very impressive stuff. Now let's move on to, I think really the main highlight of this is that it's the customization is endless mm. for creation. So walk me through all the customization you have in this new product. Sure, so with the Rodecaster Pro 2, we um, at Rode, we always listen to our customers. And one of the things that we had requested a lot with the original version was something a little bit more compact. Mm. Um, a lot of podcasts are running, you know, four microphones plus external sources and, and calls. But there's a lot of podcasts out there and other, you know, applications for the original Rodecaster where people only use one or two microphones and then they have a bunch of other sources. Sure. So what makes the Rodecaster Pro 2 really amazing is the fact that you can completely customize this interface however you like. Um, the first way that you can do that uh, is with all of your RGB LEDs and your different controls. But what makes it really amazing is the fact that I can just tap on any one of these channels and I can reassign what source is being controlled by the fader. So for instance, I can go on to channel two here, I've got set up as a guitar um, or a, a instrument input source. I can switch that to a line input source or a microphone if I like. But what I can also do is instead of having a, um, a one of our actual combo jack inputs on Fader 2, I might just tap on that button and say, I want to have my USB return on Fader 2. Mm. Tick the button, suddenly I've just changed the mixer entirely. I can go into a menu here and to my fader assignments and I can just drag and drop to reassign fader. So I might have USB 1, USB 2, <laughs> my Bluetooth channel, and now this is already in like five seconds, it's right. a different mixer than what we started out with. <laughs> that drag and drop thing is really cool, like really easy to just, and so intuitive, the, the, the touch screen. Well, I want to this is a 5.5 inch LCD touch screen, right? It is, yeah, so it's a okay. HDR touch screen with haptic feedback as well. Haptic feedback, that's really nice. Yeah. That's really nice, so you can know you made a decision. Exactly. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that, so. Uh, that confidence, yeah. That, that's right, and when you're you know, kind of making adjustments, like say turning things on, turning things off, mm -hmm. then you'll get that haptic feedback. It's not 
all the time while you're using the screen, but it's just for those contextual controls, mm. which makes it really a breeze to use, especially when you're working fast and on the fly. Awesome. And not only that, but you also have this little rotary knob here as well to help make like really fine-tuned adjustments? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So for instance, if I go into my channel settings and I can have a look at the gain level on this pod mic here, um, and what I can do is I can either tap to adjust the gain, or I can just simply roll the wheel here and get exact gain adjustments. And the same deal when I go to my different uh, processing options. So I can go into my um, simple processing mode here, and the contextual rotary will always light up green on the screen to match, you know, the, the little oh, that's halo a nice LED around indicator. the rotary. Yeah, okay. And then so I can, you know, adjust my DSP settings here, uh, up or down, and straight away you can see how easy that is. And then I tap it to finish the setting, and it goes back to the standard. Um, you know, kind of page. Perfect. If I am on the home screen, the rotary controls the speaker outputs. Um, and if I, you know, tap on any other source, for instance, when we talk about customizability, we also have, uh, we've got our six physical faders. Right. But there's loads of different inputs available on this. So we even have virtual faders. So right next to those physical faders, you can see all the lights here. Uh, my, my smart pads are on, you know, fader six. Okay. But then I have other sources that I might not be adjusting all the time that I can tap on the screen and adjust them with the rotary. So you have actually far more channels than what is physically right. uh, controlled by the faders as well. Tons of options and customizations. Yeah, that's that's really, really neat. And you also have, uh, so you have four inputs. So that means mm -hmm. you also have four headphone uh, inputs as well with each their own individual uh, volume control? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what you can see here with the Halo uh, LEDs around the outside, we got them all color coded. They actually match the road channel colors. So you can get, um, you know, various different channel identification mm -hmm. um, cables for the NTH100 headphones, for instance, okay. um, so that you can identify all your different channels. Um, we have a, a, a set of ID rings for XLR cables, so the XLR ID rings. Oh, that's and neat. It makes okay. it so easy when oh, you're yeah. setting up a, a Absolutely. Shoot. That's, yeah. Cable management is crucial. Yeah. That's it. And the nice thing about those headphone outputs is that they are completely uh, discreetly amped and they have discrete signals going into them, which means um, some of the functions that we'll get into in a little while, mm -hmm. um, you can send pretty much a different source from the unit into the headphones. So if we want to, for instance, be able to communicate from the host channel specifically to the headphones on the person that's plugged into number four without you know, the other guests hearing it, we can do that as well because they are um, receiving a discrete mix. So these new pads are not just touch pads, they're also smart pads. What can you tell me about these? Sure, yeah. So with the original Rodecaster Pro, we had sounds available on the on the side of the unit so that you could play back your intros, outros, things like that. Right, right. With the Rodecaster Pro 2, these are now smart pads, which um, give you the access to be able to play back sounds and record sounds to the, the pads, but also mixer actions so you can control things on the unit, like global fade-ins, fade-outs. Um, uh, MIDI controls so that mm. you can control things downstream, maybe okay. like OBS switching, things like that, oh. um, uh, and even voice effects. So we have a whole host of different voice effects available that you can trigger from the smart pads. And you can see at the bottom of the smart pads, you can cycle through pages and pages of different setups. Like endless amounts of pages. You yeah, can I mean, these things, right? that's it. So just like um, when you have like apps on your smartphone, mm -hmm. it will always open up a blank set um, of oh, pads wow. on the on the the final page, and then it'll skip back to the start. So at the moment we have four available. Um, out of the box, um, you can stack up to eight, uh, but you know the hardware itself is, is is not limited at all. So you know we can you know endlessly customize. That. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, I want to talk about. I want to move back to the back here again of the mm. unit and talk about these because you have two. Uh, USB-C ports, uh, tell me the motivation behind these. Sure. So with the Rodecaster Pro 2, we have um, some never before seen digital connectivity on this unit for anything like this. Mm -hmm. um, something that's really amazing is that, uh, first of all, we've moved to USB-C power for the unit. Right, um, yes. So you'll see We're there's three USB-C. Right yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we've got three USB-C ports on the back. The first one is dedicated for power. You can use a, a standard power bank to be able to you know, power it out on the road. Okay. Um, otherwise, it comes with a really nice uh, power supply. Next to that, we have two separate USB-C ports. These are um, able to connect to two computers at the same time. Right. So for anyone that's in the gaming, streaming space, um, or live streaming, streaming of any sort, mm -hmm. um, where you might want to have a dedicated 
a computer for gaming performance right. and a separate computer to handle your live stream. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, we've got a lot of people at Rode that are, that are gaming and streaming all the time and one of the biggest challenges is how do you get your audio into both computers and back into the unit. Right. With the Rode Custom Pro 2, it has discrete audio interfaces so you can literally connect two computers at once straight over USB and have the audio coming straight back into the unit and send wow. your mix over to both. Man, um, great. So that makes it super, super flexible. Yeah, yeah. It's such a versatile, yeah. I mean, not just for podcasts, but for gaming. Are you are you a streamer? Oh, I don't stream yet. <laughs> but <laughs> I, might mean, I might be persuaded now that I've got the Rode Custom Pro 2. That's we awesome. do some product live streams and things yeah. like that with Rode. Um, and yeah. we use the Rode Custom Pro for all of that. So Fantastic. The other thing you can do with the uh, USB is device hosting and SSD oh, hosting. Okay. So for instance, I have a, a Samsung T7 That's SSD right. right now. And you can see on the screen here, if I tap, I've got my micro SD. Yep, and I also that. have an SSD plugged in and I can record straight to the SSD. If I just hit that record button, now we're recording onto mm. an SSD that's just connected over USB. Right. Another thing I can do with the USBs is plug in a smartphone. So for instance, if I want to plug in an Android or an iOS device, right. it is fully MFI certified, so it is natively compatible with an iPhone, for instance. So there's two ways you can use it. One is if you want to make calls to people and bring them into your show, you simply connect it up with a lightning accessory cable. Rode has one uh, called the uh, SC19. Okay. Uh, we have a couple of other shorter ones in the range. Um, important to note is that it's not a charge and sync cable that comes with your device. Apple mm. has two different forms of cable that need to be MFI certified. Okay. One is the one that you can charge and sync your phone. The other is a lightning accessory cable. There's a few different manufacturers. Rode right. has one called the SC19. So lightning accessory cable is what you need to make this work. Yes. Okay. Um, and what that does is it means that if I plug that in, I can connect up my uh, iPhone, for instance, yep. And straight away, it will bring up the audio onto uh, my USB 2 channel. So I okay. can then play music through the device, um, oh, wow. I can okay. make phone calls. But the other amazing thing which you touched on mm. is that if I wanted to use this to do a full live stream, yeah. so for instance, you want to do a video podcast or something like that and actually stream it out, you have the full mix going straight into any app that you want to use on your smartphone. You don't need a proprietary app. You can literally open the standard camera app. You could stream it you know, online using right. any of the different social media apps. Yeah. Yeah. With a fully produced mix, just like yeah, that. Plug I the cable in. I'm thinking about you like, you know, a lot of musicians who are trying to grow on social media, you know, they could potentially potentially do a whole show using this, plugging all their instruments and stuff and then Definitely. just send it out to all their all their followers. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's pretty amazing. So whether you're a DJ, whether you're a podcaster, mm -hmm. whether you're a gamer, whether you're doing, you know, cocktail hour, you know, and, sure. and live streaming it, whatever you're doing. There's a there's, Twitch there's, channel for everybody. There's literally a Twitch channel for everyone. <laughs> you can do all of that literally by, um, there's so many different ways. You can, yeah. for one, you can track your, your whole show to an SSD and to the internal micro SD. You can send out multi-channel audio via one of the USB ports. You can then also connect up uh, your smartphone and stream it live. Like any any situation you can conceive, you can do with the Rode yeah, Custom Pro 2. Absolutely. Really easy to, um, if you don't want it on a table, on the back there's actually two ways of mounting, right? Yeah, there are. So on the bottom of the unit, I'm just gonna lift that up so people can see. There we, go. we have a standard Visa mount uh, adapter on the bottom as well as a 3 8 inch thread. So the Visa mount system is basically your studio arms and all that kind of stuff, like your yep. studio monitor yep. um, arms. Um, so you can mount the Rodecaster Pro on that and get it off your desk. Something that all mm. of the guys at Rode um, uh, are always trying to uh, do is maximize desk space. Desk space something. is very valuable. It I is. Understand, Ryan? It's very, yeah. very valuable. Yeah. These days, if, yeah. if you could put a price on that real estate on the corner of your <laughs> yeah. desk, you know that's like that's some exactly <laughs> some highly exactly. valuable space. <laughs> so we wanted people to be able to get it up off the off the yeah. desk. There is a Rode swivel mount adapter available as well, so that you can pop it onto a stand. Um, I mean, that makes it amazing for, um, I mean, even uh, at a recent road event, we had the Rodecaster Pro 2 with a musician, a singer-songwriter, you know, they had their guitar set up, yep. plugged into the unit, and they could stand up right next to the Rodecaster Pro uh, 2, and they could have the main mix going out. It has full DSP control, um, mm. something that, w that I could show you, actually, really sure. simple to Please. set up. So when you go into your different channel settings, I can, you know, I'm on a microphone channel here, mm -hmm. um, and I have these very simple controls for depth, sparkle, or punch. Mm. And what that is, is actually controlling a whole host of different dynamics controls in the back end, and EQ, and the Aphex, Oral Exciter, a really amazing processor that we've got internally on there. Basically, I can go from those very simple controls straight into advanced processing, where I have 
everything, there it is, yeah. you know, granular control of uh, compressor, de noise gating, um, a high pass filter, EQ, a full parametric EQ, um, the Aphex Aurel Exciter and Big Bottom, panning. Every single channel can be panned left or right. Um, you know, even though you have, um, you know, the various input sources coming in, any source can be a stereo channel and pan. Absolutely. I mean, it looks complicated, Ryan, but uh, you guys at Rode, you, you want to make things as, as simple to use as possible. So anyone who might be intimidated by this, I don't think you should be. Mm. Like, tell me how easy it is to set up. Like, say you just had one mic. Yep. How easy it is to set this up and just start recording. It's incredibly simple. Yep. You turn it on and it takes you through a setup assistant where it will literally ask you uh, to turn the headphones down, get the level set right, play some sounds for you so that you can get a comfortable level. Uh, and then it walks you through the entire process. Mm. There's even QR codes you can scan um, to be able to learn, you know, from the road. I see one right um, here. Videos. Yeah. yeah, I mean, even on top of the unit, you can scan that um, QR code and you'll be taken to the Rodecaster Pro 2 Learning Hub where you can learn how to use the entire unit. It is super powerful, but it's incredibly intuitive and incredibly simple to use. Yeah, so, you know, we always ask the question, like, who is it for, right, mm. here at B&H? So, you know, I really think, I mean, listening to you talk, it's almost for anybody who wants to use it. But, you know, from, from Rode, who you guys, who do you think this is for? This is for content creators. Mm. The, the thing that we found with the original Rodecaster Pro was that um, even though it was originally conceived as a podcasting console, we, through dozens of different firmware updates, uh, talking to hundreds of, uh, hundreds of thousands of different people out there for what they actually wanted out of a, a console, um, we learned a lot about the applications and Rodecaster Pros found themselves on live streams, on podcasts, in, in music studios, everything. And we wanted to rethink it um, with the Rodecaster Pro 2 and make something that really was um, suitable for any content creator. And to do that, it has to be customizable. You can't just have you know, the same layout for everybody. Right, right. So when I say content creators, I'm talking musicians, I'm mm. talking podcasters, I'm talking gamers and live streamers. Right. Um, I'm talking uh, live events. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're doing uh, panel talks, this is the greatest thing to use for a mm. panel talk because you can literally send a different mix out over the headphones to be able to communicate with people with in-ears, for instance. And isn't there, like, is, isn't there great for live shows because there's Bluetooth connectivity, right? So you there can is. send a monitor essentially to a, a, or even to the Bluetooth headphones to a producer who needs to listen, Sure, right? yeah. So yeah. this is another amazing thing about the Rodecaster Pro uh, 2 is the fact that you have um, your various input sources. So you've got your analog inputs here, you have mm -hmm. digital inputs, yep. um, you know, over USB. So you have your separate computers that can come in. Mm -hmm. You have the ability to run a mix minus uh, on a separate chat interface. Even on just one of those computers, you can have multi-channel audio as well as a separate chat for like Zoom and Teams mm -hmm. and those kind of calls. Wow. Wow. But what you can also do, if I jump onto the Bluetooth channel here, I can send um, audio from my smartphone or a tablet or anything like that to the unit with a mix minus for phone calls, but I can also pair a Bluetooth speaker as an output. So you can actually host an input source or you can host an output source. When you do that, you can see that this little rotary here currently is controlling the main output level yep. um, uh, via the speaker slash line outs here. Mm -hmm. What happens when I pair up a Bluetooth speaker is it just pops up next to that and then I can control that level. So you can literally set it up as a Bluetooth output source as well. So whether uh, yeah. you're going to just a simple little, you know, uh, Bluetooth speaker, mm -hmm. whether you're connecting to an in-house system over Bluetooth, there's a lot of conference rooms, for instance, that will have Bluetooth input, yep. um, or whether you just want to send it to a, yeah, a pair of headphones for the producer behind the camera, you can do all of that. All right, now let's do a deep dive into these smart pads because I know that we've barely scratched the surface of what they're capable of. So Ryan, take it away. How much can you do with these smart pads? Sure. So if we dive into the smart pad menu here, um, from the home screen, you can uh, uh, see that as you cycle through the different smart pads, you can see what's on each one. And you know the the initial function, you know, for the smart pads is that you can play back, you know, music. For instance, I can fade in an intro track um, for the start of my podcast, fade that back out. Um, and that's really flexible because I can set that up into different playback modes. To loop, for instance, so if I had some music that I wanted to loop in the background before a live stream um, or before an event, you could have that on loop. I can set it up for a one shot so that I, if I hit it, it'll play again and again. If I've got like some fun sounds, um, uh, I could even load you know, maybe a backing track if I'm a musician and, and I want to play along, you know, to, oh, yeah, to okay, a beat yeah. or something like that. Another thing that I can do is just dive straight into that menu and add a new sound. Oh, and yep. this is where I can sample sounds directly on the fly. So you can see here, I've got like a little recording screen. Yep. And if I want to hit record, it will record anything that goes through the unit. So whether I want to record the music from my phone uh, for my intro, 
sample it straight to the unit, I can do that. Or if I just want to record maybe a conversation, if I'm setting up a call and I want to pre-record it, um, I just tap, simply tap on the little record button there. Testing one, two, three, this is a sound pad. As soon as I've done that, I can play it back immediately. So that's a sound pad, right? Yeah. Now, if I had a sound that I really wanted to trim up, I also have an editor here. So I can go through, I can trim the start. I'm getting haptic feedback when I lock that in. Oh, no, that's and great. I can also do fades. So I can fade the start and the end. So you have a really nice sound, play that back. So it's basically a sampler as well. Um, I can then change playback modes, loop on or off. I can have it continue or start, pause, start, pause. So maybe you're doing something where you want to discuss, you know, a piece of content and pause it every now and then and talk about it and come back. You can yep. do that. Yep. Um, or I can set it to be a press and hold that'll play or a one shot, anything like that. Um, so super flexible in terms of the audio pads. Um, even if I've loaded some different sounds onto the unit, for instance, I'll just set that. I'll go into like one of the standard sounds um, and I can jump into, you know, maybe this particular sample. I can edit any of these different sounds just by jumping into edit. I can change the color. Color is super simple. I just dial that and you'll see, uh, yeah. you know, the, uh, the sound <laughs> pad changing. I can lock that in. Um, you know, another thing I can do on that same one is change the name uh, or edit the sound. And, you know, maybe I want to put a little fade on that and then I've locked that in, you know. So super simple to do it. It even highlights what sound pad you're editing in that, in that setup. The next thing I can do with these smart pads is, for instance, set up voice effects. Okay, yeah, I, like, I do love voice effects. Yeah, Those are my favorite. it's a lot of fun. Now, these can be creative effects just for a bit of fun. They can even be things like reverbs. Um, uh, we have a, a reverb available. We have an echo available, uh, megaphone, uh, different robot voices, small, medium, large robot. Um, a voice disguise, uh, even a pitch shift. And the way that you set that up is you choose what effect. You can stack effects into each other. I could have a pitch shift with a reverb and an echo on it, all on one, one particular um, smart pad. And then I can choose what channels I want it to apply to. So I don't have to have it as a global effect. I can say, I want this to only affect, you know, channel two or channel one uh, or all of them. Once I do that, I can, you know, adjust using the uh, rotary control. Um, turn it on and then when I press on that sound pad I can either have it latching or momentary um, testing one two three and then you can hear straight away you know that that is the effect that's running so it's a whole lot of fun that's that's speaking of customization I mean I think you just sort of proved that this <laughs> this Rodecaster Pro 2 is just the ultimate customization machine for, sure. for any kind of content creation I mean if we dive yeah. even further into it you have mixer actions so this is where it gets really interesting I can control the entire mixer with a bunch of different mix actions that we have set up. So whether it's okay. a sensor button where you want that beep every time someone, you know, has some, mm -hmm. you know, flowery, <laughs> flowery language, I should say. Yeah, right. Um, yes. uh, if I want to do a global fade in, fade out, I don't even have to use the faders. I can set this up um, as a fade out button. I can turn that up and say, I want a four second fade when I hit that button. It'll fade all of the channels out, including the virtual channels. And then when I press it again, the channels will fade back in. It's not using motorized faders, it's digitally controlling the channels, mm. um, which is really handy if you don't want to have to grab everything and fade it out at the end of a show. Right. Another thing I can do is back channel communications. So say I'm in a show and I want to be able to talk to one of the other people on my show just through their headphones without anyone else hearing it so that I don't stop the flow of yeah, whatever's going right, on. Right, like a producer yeah. talking into sure, in-ears. Sure, absolutely, know. yeah. I can set up, okay, I want microphone one to talk to headphone four. And when I press that button, what'll happen is you can see those lighting up there. Yep. Right? And what I'm doing now is I'm talking into my microphone. My mic is removed from the mix and I'm just talking to headphone four. And I might say, hey, get a little bit closer to the mic or, you know, you're, you're rustling yeah. a little bit or something yeah. like that. Right. Um, super handy. If it's a panel talk scenario and you want to talk to somebody in their in-ears, hey, talk a little bit more about this or that. As a producer, you can do that too. Mm -hmm. Or, for instance, if you have a phone call coming in and you bring it into a show and you want to chat to the caller before yep. you bring their fader up. You can say, hey, welcome to the show. The, you know, the, the host is going to bring you in in a couple of minutes, just hold yep. tight in the background. Sure, yeah. And you can do that and then immediately as soon as you release that smart pad, you're back on the show and you, you're talking again. Yeah. The other thing, the last one that you can do, because mm -hmm. um, uh, it just keeps on going, it really is, does. <laughs> you could go all day with this thing. Yes. Is MIDI triggers. So I can go in and set up any of these different smart pads on any page as a MIDI trigger, either a standard or a custom uh, MIDI message. And this is where it gets super powerful for streamers because if you want to control OBS, for instance, yeah, right. 
this is where it's like next level. What you can do is set it up to fade to black, to switch cameras, to start stop, anything that you want to control, you can do that with the Rodecaster Pro. And the nice thing about the fact that it's so powerful is that you can do it all simultaneously. I could trigger a sound on page one, have that rolling and then jump over to page three and start switching cameras in OBS. Um, it's super, super, super powerful and flexible. Yeah. What, what's the processor in here that, that can do all this? So it's all possible because of a, a 1.5 gig quad core uh, processor that we have on board, um, which means that not only is this, you know, incredibly powerful, you know, right away, it also, anyone who knows Road knows that we like to uh, improve our products uh, over yeah. time and, and add additional functions, and that's also totally going to be the case with the Rodecaster Pro So we can expect future firmware updates to even improve the already impressive Rodecaster Pro 2. Of course, that's uh, that's how we work at Rode, and um, we have a whole host of different updates planned. I mean, even from you know about four to six weeks after the launch of the unit, you'll see um, some amazing things coming out. And what's really cool about that is that the Rodecaster Pro 2 has network and Wi-Fi connectivity. So. Uh, not only you know does it have all these amazing functions, <laughs> I can go into system here, network, and I can connect up to a Wi-Fi network here. And what that does is it enables me to get push firmware updates. So if you've just got this uh, in yeah. your studio, mm -hmm. you'll see a little notification here saying firmware update available, download and install, or just download in the background. So that means you don't even have later. to like get a memory card and download and then put it in, it just does it in the unit. Wow. Yeah. Okay. As soon as you turn it on, you can update to the latest firmware. All right, I feel like we've barely sort of scratched the surface of what this thing can do, and let's take a little deeper dive into the menu. What else uh, can this guy do that we haven't talked about just yet? Sure. So if I dive in here um, into the menu, uh, super simple layout, and first of all, you can see our fader assignment. So this is where I can just drag and drop, you know, to assign faders into mm -hmm. different positions, change the interface. If I go back and into the output options, this is where it gets really interesting. So the first menu option there, I have the ability to change the output to different sensitivity headphones. So one of the mm. things that a lot of people would notice right. is if they use you know, some uh, low sensitivity 250 ohm headphones, right. they really need to crank up their headphone yeah. amps yeah. versus using some high sensitivity earbuds, you know, that same headphone amp might be you know, completely okay. you know, crazy volume control. So yeah. we're actually customizing the gain curve, for these super powerful headphone uh, outputs to suit either the Rode NTH100s mm. or high or low sensitivity headphones. Super easy to set up. If I go back, I can go into my multi-track options. Now, over USB uh, to a solid state drive to the micro SD, you can record either just the stereo mix, the full, you know, kind of processed stereo mix, or you can choose to record multi-track, which will record every single source individually. Mm -hmm. I can choose to record that pre-fader, which means that all of my fader movements aren't going to affect the mix. I'm recording the raw audio. Oh, okay, okay. I can choose with processing on or off. So all the processing decisions I made, I could have um, a recording that just has the raw tracks without all of that, or I could keep all the processing on and just have them as discrete files, mm -hmm. or I can choose to record post fader, meaning that if I pull a fader up or down, the, the file that I receive in my multi-channel recording will have those fader movements uh, included. Another thing you can do in this menu is um, dive into the processing. Mm. Now this is a master processor. Uh, we have the Aphex Compeller. This is what you would see at the, uh, the final end of the chain before a TV broadcast or right. a radio broadcast, for instance, to mm. get the levels really nice. Yep. Anyone who's ever experienced a really quiet show followed by a really loud ad break didn't have an Aphex Compeller on the output, basically. Oh, and that too solves, often. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> yeah. solves that problem. Yep. Um, a really nice, you know, master compressor. The other thing we have is an output delay. Anyone streaming would know that video is almost every single time slower than audio because it's got to process maybe yes. through a vision switch or all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. What you can do on the Rodecaster Pro is delay the output so you can get your audio and video sync perfect just using this um, menu. Mm -hmm. Next, what we have in here is the ability to change uh, the recording options. I can record to a broadcast wave file. Ah, yes, okay. Or I can record to MP3, for instance, if I want to just use this as a backup and have loads and loads and loads of recording. Sure, yeah. Um, uh, I can even change the monitor outputs so that they automatically mute as soon as I bring up one of the microphone channels in the studio. So any professional radio studio will always have speakers inside the studio 
uh, playing the audio live right. all the time, except when they're using mics, because you don't want feedback. So what you can do on the unit is that when a fader comes up, the audio monitors mute. When you pull the fader down, they come back alive so you can listen to your music without the audio running. Hmm. Um, I can even set that to a fixed output level. And you can see the rotary control is now no longer green because I'm not actively controlling the output level. Right, okay. Um, so that's just some of the options that we have there. That's on the outputs. I then have the options to customize the display, change the metering to broadcast metering, so I can see uh, everything. You know, if you're in a professional, you know, kind of radio setup, you'd always want to look at broadcast metering, showing your uh, dB full scale clipping. Mm -hmm. Not necessary for most users to dive into that. I can change the brightness of the screen, um, the brightness of the buttons in their lit or unlit state, the active mm. or inactive state. Um, you can really customize everything. And that is where we also dive into shows. Yes, okay. This is how you can designate how you save your shows and create presets almost yes. to, 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 when you start your show, right? Exactly. Right. So one of the things that we wanted to do with the Roadcaster Pro 2 is obviously being so customizable to the user, um, we know that most content creators don't just do one thing. You know, most people that are a podcaster also want to maybe use this for the audio for their Skype calls. Most people that are a musician might be a gamer as well. And that requires a different setup. So sure. you can save all of this into a show. What the show does is, for one, it'll store all of your recordings into a particular folder, but it also remembers all of the settings, all of the sounds, all of the presets, and I could have as many shows as I want. So I might have three different podcast setups where I have a different guest arrangement, yep. all with a different fader assignment. Or I might have a podcast during the day and at night I'm gaming and streaming, I just simply load up my other show, um, game setup, and immediately the unit will um, completely change the channel assignment to the last setting that you saved. <laughs> wow, yeah. That's, uh, that, that saves a lot of time and a lot of stress. It certainly <laughs> does. You're ready to roll, absolutely. Yeah, so there you go. I mean, there's so many more things I could dive into. But um, Well, if but... you do, we might they, <laughs> might they might turn the lights off. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, thank you so much. Thank you. Real pleasure. It's one heck of a machine here. This is truly the quintessential all-in-one audio solution uh, from Rhodes, the Rodecaster Pro 2. I'm Jake with B&H. Just keep rolling.